Hi, I'm John Sterling, and I'm creating a new tool for mathematical thought called Forrester. Forrester is meant to be a medium for mathematical thinkers to accumulate and interact with an associative network of permanent atomic notes, like definitions, theorems, and ideas, and then assemble them after the fact into narratives that facilitate exploration, learning, and recall. I'm going to show you a feature today that I've just implemented, which I believe will make it easier to explore these mathematical forests. When we open up my own forest, we're simply shown a list of all the trees. It can be hard to figure out where to start. Although a high-quality mathematical node is necessarily somewhat self-contained, the contextualization of ideas has to be go beyond formal self-containment. We need to understand how an idea is used. For instance, suppose we were browsing and we happened upon this note called Linear and Thunkable Maps. Now let's click that. So we do have a self-contained definition, but we don't really understand it because we have not contextualized it. Forrester supports three kinds of interactive exploratory contextualization. You can see that below the definition here we have three little link sections. Let's see how they support explorers of mathematical forests to contextualize the ideas that they encounter. So in the context section, we have a single item called deductive systems. Uh, expanding this, so we can actually click that open, expanding this will show the narrative context in which the definition of linear and thunkable maps occurs, in this case in a draft hypertext article on deductive systems. So we see here that linear and thunkable maps occurs in, uh, inside this article, um, uh, right after some notations and other definitions, and right before an, another definition that depends on it. So narrative contextualizations are useful because they help us to understand the neighbors of a current concept within the narrative flow, what comes before, what comes after, at what point in learning something are we expected to know what a linear and thunkable maps is. Um, an important part of supporting narrative contextualization is that narrative contextualizations cannot be unique. Um, uh, many narratives or linear or hierarchical structures can be imposed on the same associative mathematical network. For instance, one narrative could be an encyclopedia article, which is, this looks kind of like one of those. Another could be lecture notes, and another could be a homework sheet with exercises interspersed. So let's, let's collapse that and look at other, uh, the other kinds of contextualization that we have. So next in the related section, we can explore the concepts that the present note links to. We have cited the definition of deductive systems in the first sentence here, so we can expand that definition. So now here we have just the definition of a deductive system. The reason this is in this section is because we have a link here. And this is generated automatically. So if we close that, we can have a look at the uh, next section. Finally, in the backlinks section, we can understand how the, uh, the concept of linear and thunkable maps is actually used in other places. For instance, it's used to define the concept of a positive or a negative object. And it's also used in the statement of a lemma that relates deductive systems to categories. That's all for today. Thank you for your interest in Forrester. If you found this interesting, please join the discussion on hashtag tools for mathematical thought on Mastodon. I'm John M. Sterling at mathstodon.xyz.